The current theory of evolution accepted by most scientists today involves genetic mutations which produce physical changes in the organism which are acted on by natural selection which preserves those that are favorable for the survival of the organism and this process extended over time gradually produces whole new organisms, different species. It's a plausible idea, however, there are a few problems with it. One is that no one has actually observed the production of all these new species. It's something that's assumed. And even from the theoretical point of view, no one has ever given an exact detailed explanation of how these factors have produced any living organism from its supposed ancestor. In order to do that, one would have to, first of all, specify the genome of the supposed ancestral species. Then one would have to specify exactly what changes took place in the genome of that ancestral species to produce the descendant species. And it's actually even a little more complicated than that. Uh, because all that a gene does is tell a cell how to construct a, a protein from different sorts of amino acids in the cell. So one would have to specify what protein a new gene produced and what effect that this new protein would have on the development of the animal. One would also have to specify the environment that the animal existed in and how this production of this new protein resulted in some changes in the animal that conferred greater survivability on it in the environment in which it existed. And of course, one would also have to explain how this a new mutation and feature spread from the original animal that possessed it to a whole population of animals. So if we look in the scientific literature, we do not find any such exact detailed explanations of how this evolutionary process actually operated in the case of any, you know, the origin of any particular species. And we also observe that people who try to breed plants and animals can produce changes in animals or plants, but only to a limited degree. And if they try to push the process too far, it results either in the death of the animal, you know, the embryo of the new animal, or uh, the production of a sterile animal or plant, one that can't reproduce. So there do seem to be some limits on the process of breeding. That's one of the evidences that Darwin used for his original formulation of his theory, you know, the idea that humans, by breeding plants and animals, are able to produce changes. And therefore, you know, he proposed, well, if you extended these changes over vast, vast periods of time, you could actually get not just changes in an animal, but an entirely new type of animal or plant. But this has not actually been observed in the process of breeding plants and animals. What's actually observed is that you reach a point where you either don't get anything or you get a, a plant or an animal that can't reproduce, that's sterile. 
So there are some problems with this proposed explanation for the origin of species, the origin of complex new features in animals or complex new behaviors. The main problem is it really hasn't been systematically, thoroughly done in a detailed way. So I have no objection if individual scientists want to keep pursuing this theory, if they want to keep working on it, but I think they should be honest enough to admit that they've got a long ways to go to demonstrating the evolutionary origin of any particular species or any particular organic structure or instinctive behavior in any particular species by these methods. So I think they should be honest enough to admit that and they should also not try to impose their particular way of looking at things on others. There should be some uh, respect for the right of individual researchers to pursue other ideas. And there are researchers who are pursuing other ideas. There are, for example, those working on intelligent design ideas. There are those working on creationist ideas. And they may be in an extreme minority today in the world of science, but I believe that there should be respect for intellectual freedom and researchers should be free to pursue whatever line of reasoning they want to. If it makes sense to them, they should be able to do it. And there shouldn't be any banning of certain ideas or uh, uh, giving monopolies to certain ideas in the world of science, uh, trying to inform enforce some strict conformity. I don't think that is very good for a free society.